The reason God is so interested in our financial empowerment and our engagement in kingdom finance, apart from the chiefest reason, which is to advance his kingdom, are uh, number one. Our finances are a testimony of our heart for sacrifice. Only a man who understands sacrifice can give his resources for kingdom advancement or give his resources for the things of God. And so when God sees people giving, he is not judging the money. He doesn't need money where he lives. But it's a transaction in the spirit that reveals how much of yourself is sold out. Many people cry, Lord, I am your own. I am your own. When the sister was singing now, some people were weeping. I am your own. I am your own. The way God checks is not by what you are saying alone. If you are his own, everything you have will belong to him. And the way he will prove it is by watching if you can drop it as a tool, a token of sacrifice. Hmm. In Genesis chapter 8 verse 20, when Noah gave all the clean beasts as an offering to God, he judged it as sacrifice. He doesn't need animals. God doesn't eat animals. But when you give it, he looks at your heart and says, this man is truly sold out. Now, because he is sold out, I can give him authority in my kingdom. Because the kingdom is not for selfish and self-centered people. And so the way you prove to God that you are ready to become a kingdom agent is by what you can give. You notice that in Mark 12, 41 to 44, when the poor widow gave, she gave the list in numerical terms. But Jesus looked at the percentage profile. She saw that this woman didn't have much, but she gave 100%. There were people there who gave much, much, much more than what the widow gave. But Jesus said they gave out of their own abundance. He said, but this woman gave all that she has. So God is looking at the depth of sacrifice. When a man gives to God, he doesn't need that money. He will never need it. But your sacrifice is a currency in the spirit. When God sees your sacrifice, there are many things he can commit to you because now he knows you are sold out. And so two people can give. One gave a million naira, another gave a thousand naira. That guy who gave a million has 100 million. He just threw that one out because it won't affect him. The one who gave a thousand has just a thousand. God will appreciate the one who gave one million. But in the corridor of giving, the person who gave one million is a child. He's still growing. The one who gave a thousand gave much more because that one understood sacrifice the most. He gave all because of the percentage profile. So it is sacrifice God looks at. And that's why we will not stop teaching the subject of giving. Because in addition to kingdom advancement, is one way God teaches us and infuses the spirit of sacrifice into our soul structure. Number two, why is God so interested in our givings? Because he sees it as an act of worship. There are many things that reflect worship in the kingdom. We have reduced worship in the modern day church to singing with organs, with keyboards, with a golden voice. I can tell you by authority that the least worshippers in the body of Christ today I don't have time to, to go to balance it. But singing, singing, everybody sings. In fact, sometimes we sing from our emotions. So the least worshippers in the body of Christ today are those who are singing. And I'm not talking about music ministers. I'm talking about all of us who sing. Because even fornicators sing. In fact, when you sing songs that they like, they dance more than everybody. Some of the songs you are even singing, it reminds them of their steps in the club. And so when people are dancing, you will just know that, ah, this person is not following the rhythm of the Holy Spirit. Oh, these steps I'm seeing here looks like a, a, a <laughs> this is a, an alien step. So singing and dancing is good, but that's the least level. The reason those things are good is because those sounds are supposed to create a vehicle in your soul that transmit spiritual resources to the realms of God. So as good and beautiful as it is, 
I can tell you very few people, very few, worship God through singing and dancing. Very few. Most people, what they are doing is just an emotional response to sounds and beats that they love. They are not transmitting any incense. Very few people worship God. And we need to do a teaching on how to worship God through singing and dancing. Because most of the things we are even doing now, it doesn't have life in it. Thank God for the few who are still priests. Because it takes priesthood to be able to create a sound that can translate heaven. So thank God for those who are still priests. And when you hear their songs, you will know. Because beyond the melody, you will interact with the life. It must hit you and you will know. But you see, when you are dealing with worship, when you do singing, dancing, there is a place of prostrating before God. That's why the 20 and 4 elders always lie on their faces. You know what it means? It's forgetting about yourself and submitting yourself to his majesty. It's a sign. It's not just about lying down. It's actually a testimony of submission. When you find somebody who worships with the posture of lying down, that lying down in the spirit is supposed to be symbolic of submission. That there is no aspect of his life where he's in charge. God is completely in charge. And that's why before you prostrate, you must remove your crown and you must leave your throne. You cannot prostrate with your throne and with your crown. You have to remove the crown and leave the throne to be able to prostrate. Because it's a sign of surrender. It's a sign of submission. So surrendering and submitting to God is a higher worship than singing. Because when you enter the throne room, the first thing you collide with is that song. Songs, you are hearing sounds. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. After the sound, then they lie down. Are you seeing that? So lying down is superior to singing. And then when, you, when they lie down, you now go to the next level. They cast their crown. They gave their best. Their crown is the symbol of their possession in the realm of God. They gave it out. That's why when we teach these things, we need you to understand why it is so. It's not every time you give to God, you are expecting a car in return. That's materialism. It's not every time you give to God, you are expecting healing. Many times when you give to God, it's just a sign of surrender. It's just a sign of submission. You are casting your crown. You are giving your pairs. Because you know that this one is sovereign. And everything you are, he gives meaning to you. And so worship has cadres. From singing to lying down, which is surrender, to giving your best to God. So when we give, God sees it as an act of worship. That's why when Abraham was to give his son, in Genesis 22 verse 5, he said, I am going up yonder to worship he wasn't going there to sing he was going there to sacrifice Isaac he called it worship hope you know all of us here can sing but I can tell you that less than five percent of us can give Isaac so giving is a superior act of worship than singing in fact you can sing because you enjoy it but you will never enjoy giving Isaac there will never be a time when you will enjoy. If you give him a thousand times, you will weep a thousand times. 